Hi, I'm Brian, and for my final lab, I am going to explain the physics behind full throttle. Uh, in case you don't know what full throttle is, it is a ride at Six Flags uh, at uh, Magic Mountain in LA. Uh, it is known for having the tallest loop in the world, a 57 meter tall loop. Uh, it bolts the cart, or I guess the passengers as well, at an initial speed of 70 miles per hour so that you could actually try, try to traverse the loop. Uh, and I'm going to explain the physics behind that uh, in the later slides. Uh, it has one of the longest hang times in the world, right? the longest feelings of weight listeners as you know you're in the loop for a very long time and yeah we're just going to kind of go through how this ride works uh, i am going to show a little bit of demonstration so you have a brief idea of what this ride looks like uh but essentially it's just the loop part of it right because that is going to be the main focal points of this you know this presentation uh, and as you can see there's that very long stint where they just hang at the top for quite a long time uh and that's probably one of the amazing parts um yeah, so the uh, physics fundamentals behind it, right? The main one is going to be that the cart is in a curving motion as it traverses the loop. Uh, so we do know the, the net force is going to consist of um, you know two main forces, right? The normal force and the gravitational force, right? On the right, because obviously the force diagrams, right? Uh, when at the top, when it's at the top of the loop, we're going to have uh, the contact force and the gravitational force both pointing towards the center of the loop. Uh, and when it's at the bottom of the loop, we're, we have the contact force. Um, and the gravitational force kind of balancing each other out. Um, of course, we're going to have F net equal to dp over dt, right? Change of momentum, uh, which is also going to be the sum, equal, uh, equal to the sum of the parallel components and the perpendicular components. Uh, the parallel components is obviously dependent on the speed more, right? Uh, perpendicular component yeah, is also dependent on the speed and the radius and the mass. Uh, I think another concept to touch base on is like the uh, sense of weightlessness, as you saw in the video. Uh, the car was able to kind of hang in the air at the top of the loop or upside down for quite a bit of time. Obviously, not that long, but uh, it's enough where people could sense that they're hanging. Uh, and this happens when normal force is less than the weight. Uh, when normal force is less than the weight, especially when the car is at the top of the loop, uh, gra gravity is essentially the only force that's a t um, gravity is essentially the only force that is there. Uh, and when you have gravity equal to the centrifugal uh, force, right? Uh, gravity makes up the centripetal force. We have right v is equal to square root of r times g, and that kind of also gives you the idea of like the minimum speed necessary in order to traverse the loop, right? Um, and yeah, forces we have gravity, reactionary, normal force, or contact force, I guess, uh, and energy principle. We have potential like kinetic energy, right? Where at the top of the loop, we're gonna go back to the top. At the top of the loop, gravitational potential energy is quite large, right? And kinetic energy uh, is actually lower. Uh, but as the cart tra uh, travels down from the top to the bottom of the loop, right? Speed increases and that potential energy gets transferred into that kinetic energy. Uh, and the car starts to move faster and faster and faster. Right, uh, I'm just gonna quickly demo the glow script part of it. Where, here it goes. Right, and as you can see, you're going to notice uh, from the experimental data that it is not a perfect circle. Uh, there's the little origin here, I guess, as the center of the loop, right? It is not gonna be a perfect circle. And as you saw, uh, the red ball, which represents the cart, it really hang at the top or hung at the top for quite a long time before speeding up back down here. Uh, so yeah, uh, I guess the model slash experimental analysis is that the car experiences both gravitational force and the normal force when in the loop. Um, of course, the acceleration, uh, it experiences acceleration slash uh, change in speed due to like the change in direction and speed, right? Uh, obviously the parallel component it obviously changes because the direction is always changing and the speed uh, because of, I guess, how gravity works, right? It's gonna keep decreasing in speed as it goes up the loop, right? And the component, the most important part, right? The component that allows the car to make it around the entire loop is the speed, right? Um, the centripetal force, right? As you enter the loop, essentially you're experiencing centripetal force, uh, which is equal to mv squared over r, and that has to be great enough to the point where it could actually, you know, get the cart fully around the loop, right? What if the speed isn't fast enough? Well, essentially either the cart falls directly from the top to the ground, uh, or because the cart is fastened to the track, it's just gonna go back backwards essentially because it just did not have the oomph uh, to make it all the way uh, all the way through the loop, right? Uh, I think another thing to point out is that the loop isn't a perfect circle, right? So dp over dt, uh, the perpendicular changes you know, quite often, right? mv squared over r or v squared over r. Uh, the radius is kind of uh, is obviously changing, right? And the vertical aspect to it reduces the speed as much as possible, right? Uh, I feel like what makes the, uh, the quote unquote longest hang time, uh, what makes that possible uh, is that as the uh, cart goes up, it actually, there is a vertical aspect to it, which reduces speed 
I guess, more quickly than if it was a perfect circle. Um, and yeah, that allows the hang time to be there. And it's perfectly calculated so that it, it still makes it through the loop, right? Uh, and again, um, just to reiterate the energy principle, the kinetic energy is greatest at the bottom of the loop, right, before and entering the loop, right? And this translates the potential energy as it goes up due to the increased height, as you can see from MGH. Yeah, um, that was it for full throttle. I think if anyone experiences this ride, it's actually quite exhilarating. But yeah, that was the physics behind this roller coaster. Thank you.